Hello and welcome back to the Metropolitan Culture Corner. I am here in summer mode. It's quite difficult to appear professional and culture savvy when you are melting, you know, but we do what we can here. Woo. As you know, on the Metropolitan Culture Corner, we primarily concentrate on interviewing people in the arts, but culture goes wider and deeper than the arts alone. This month, we delve into the realm of the creation of sparkling wines, which is not only a fascinating world all on its own, but wine and cava making are also an indisputably important part of Spanish and Catalan culture. Today, we will hear from both managing partners of the boutique sparkling wine producers, Nevalonics by Garrido Essences. Alex Garrido is the president and Rafael Laprea is the CEO. Mevalonix creates artisanal sparkling wines, which they describe not only as a refreshing beverage, but as an experience. Building upon many years of experience in the cava craft of the Garrido family, specifically of Alex's father, Antonio Garrido. They are an original concept that captures the aromas of nature, combining them with grapes from old Spanish vineyards to create something completely new. Now hang in there with me for one moment while we do a little bit of scientific explanation so that you guys understand just how special these sparkling wines are. The key to their process is something called turpins. Turpins are natural aromatic oils or 100% natural essences. They are extracts that are responsible for the way that fruit and plants smell. Turpins require a special treatment in order to be emulsified in water and are commonly used in essential oils, for example, in aromatherapy. But they're not a new invention by any means. Their application in medicine, religious ceremonies, and perfumes have been traced back to the ancient Egyptians, Babylonians, Romans, Greeks, Hebrews. This stuff's been around for a while. Citrus, as I mentioned, and other plants such as, for example, cannabis contain high concentrations of turpins, which is what accounts for their strong smell. Segwaying back to Mevalonix has attracted attention for incorporating turpins into their sparkling wines, and they attracted particular attention with their cannabis-infused cava, which also contains swirls of 23 karat gold flakes. That won the company the 2017-2018 gold medal for the most unique new product at the Spanibus Fair, which is the largest cannabis event in all of Europe and attracts thousands of people from all over the continent. But I would rather let them tell you more about it. Sound good? So take a moment to grab a glass of something cold, cava, if you like, Sit back, relax, and please welcome Alex Garrido and Rafael Laprea to the Metropolitan Culture Corner. Mevalonix was basically born to give a different experience to consumers, also like a quality experience, because when people experience or try Mevalonix, they sometimes are maybe thinking, okay, this is going to be too sweet, it's going to be maybe too strong, but no, at the end, it's a very subtle taste. You still have the best product, the sparkling wine, but it's a very subtle taste and it's something that is good for the body. Also, we like to say the Mevalonix get to the market that are sparkling wine drinkers, and then non-sparkling wine drinkers. I was myself a non-sparkling wine drinker. I hated sparkling wine. It would be just on celebrations, New Year, like ah, champagne, yeah, mm, the, with the grapes, wow, bye. But you're able to bring them to this side. And Mevalonis is really able to achieve that. Hello. Hello, so there you guys are. First of all, nice to meet you. Alex, you are from here, correct? Your family originally came from Jerez, but your father, Antonio, started the bodega in the Penedes region in 1984. What made you decide to stay in the family business? Pues porque mi padre me inculcó poder seguir con esta tradición, es algo que me apasiona de hace años y viendo trabajar a mi padre y la pasión que él le ponía, yo decidí continuar con ello, tanto mi madre que no está entre nosotros desde el 2012, todo el trabajo que ellos hicieron, pues poder continuar y seguir evolucionando un producto que él lleva elaborando hace más de 40 años. He continued with the family business because of the passion that his dad transmitted to him and his mom as well, all the passion that they transmitted to him. So he decided to continue with the family business and now, well, he's been the one that it's been innovating. And Rafael, in your case, you were born in Venezuela, studied in the US and eventually landed in Barcelona after living all over the place. So why Barcelona and how did you end up working with Alex and the Garidos? Why Barcelona? Long story short, I loved Sydney. It was one of the places that I was living before. I lived there for a year and couldn't stay there. I had to come back to Europe. Sydney is an amazing city and Barcelona is the closest that I found to Sydney. I fell in love with this city. So I've been here since 2017. And I met Alex. Actually, I was head of sales in a solar company and I was the one that did the installation solar panels to Alex's place, which actually it's part of the process of the making of Mevalonix is with renewable energies. Yes. 
So we met there, I went there to see the installation, then we clicked right away. He showed me the product, I was like, wow, what is this? Like, I love it. And we continued the relationship, we became really good friends and now I'm helping him relaunch the brand. To have met and to have been like, I like this guy, I like what he does. There's a huge difference between that and taking the step to create this entire concept of Mevalonics and then launch a business and these very specific products around it. So what happened between this initial meeting and this professional empathy and then taking the step to create this project together? The project was already created. The product per se was already created back Back in 2000, 2018, it started under another name with other partners, etc. These then developed onto Mevalonics and they launched right before the pandemic. So he, along with his partner, who is an alchemist from Canada mm -hmm. and an expert in terpenes or 100% natural essences, they created this blend, this infusion of premium cava with terpenes, which makes it super premium. So the project was that the product was created. He introduced me to the product and they were basically relaunching right before the pandemic. It all cooled off and now it's basically another fresh start starting from zero. And I said, okay, I have few contacts. I think I can help you relaunch the brand and that's what we do. Before we get into these natural essences and what they are, I don't really know much about the specifics of sparkling wine production. All I know is that I drink it. But I do know that even before you start talking about your specific products, which are very unique, to make sparkling wine in general, it's a process that is an art. All I know about what the Garidos do is that the grapes that they use come from aged vines, that the process is very specific and requires a lot of skill and a lot of love. But what is the most important element of the production process if you want to make a great sparkling wine. Hay varios procesos. Uno de los más importantes es la tierra, es el, la cepa, cultivar una buena uva, cómo cultivarla, cómo manipularla hasta llegar a la prensa. So the first process will be to basically grow and cultivate a grape and to taking it to the processing plant. Importante trabajar con las variedades autóctonas de cada región. Aquí trabajamos solo con las variedades de la zona del Penedès, que es Macabeo, Charello y Parallada. Y luego, una vez se hace esa selección de uva, lo que es la extracción del jugo a baja temperatura y de noche para no perder los aromas. It's very important to work with the local product, so Parallada, Charello, y Macabeo. And then when they pick up these grapes, they do it usually on the winter months when the temperatures are lower. They can still select basically the product by hand, uh -huh. right? Okay, right? So it's not collected with machines or anything like that. They do the manual process. Right? So they're in touch with the product. Una vez tenemos ese mosto, pues hacer una buena fermentación y hacer el embotellado en los meses donde se le añade el mínimo proceso químico posible al vino. Y hacer una segunda fermentación muy controlada, donde se toma por la mañana y por la noche durante seis días temperatura y densidad para saber exactamente la cantidad de azúcar y levaduras que hay que incorporarle. So, uh... Basically, because it's a control process, they give the exact amount of sugar, which it will be the food for the yeast to ferment, that it's needed. So there is not added sugar on it. They control a few times a day and they see how the yeast is doing and they give them the exact amount of food that they need. And this way, then they control the process and they can get for the first fermentation top quality. Basically, you're not having any added sugar or leftover sugar, let's say that way. Nosotros no tenemos un proceso industrializado. Es un proceso muy tradicional. Mi padre sigue haciendo un proceso como se hacía antiguamente. Para resumir un poco, cuando trabajamos con con Mevalonix Fruit, todas las botellas son mínimo, tiene una crianza de 24 meses y cuando trabajamos con los terpenos de cannabis, trabajamos con botellas de 36, 40, 50 meses. Son todo grandes reservas. So following the tradition from the parent, it's so a manual process control like we were saying before. And if you go with the fruit terpenes, it's at least 24 months age, the base product, the sparkling wine. And then for the cannabis ones, it's 36 months and up. The star of the show, so to speak, with regards to this new project that you guys have in Mevalonics, is its combination between this very artisanal concept of creating sparkling wine, plus this new idea of incorporating the turpins into the mix. So can you explain a bit, without revealing any proprietary secrets, of course, the creative process that goes into developing these flavors and also how these natural essences affect the body? Why is it more than just mixing in some flavor? It's a much more scientific process. I'll go ahead, I'll give you the shot. Uh, next to Einstein here. 
but, but I've learned a little bit from him and I can tell you that the process, because a sparkling wine, it's very susceptible or reactive to anything that is not natural to it. So you cannot just grab it and just add things and expect it to mix homogeneous way. Mm-hmm. It could react to it. It's not just like grabbing and putting the turpins in the bottle and then that's it. It has to have, of course, a specific temperatures. At the end, the turpins, it's a live ingredient. So you need to see how it evolves in the bottle. There's still a whole process. And after many, many, many tests and bottles and everything, he found a specific temperature moment in the second fermentation where it incorporated. So it's really infused and blend within the sparkling wine. So it's all homogeneous. Basically, it's testing and you taste the product. You do the meats, you wait until it evolves because maybe the blueberry does not evolve the same as the mango or the peach or the lime or the strawberry or the cannabis. So they all have, might not have its that formula. But also, if you go more into advanced, more technical, it's depending also on where the terpene is coming from. We only use 100% natural essences, it's pure, it's extracted directly from the plant or the fruit. It's not recreated, it's not synthetic, none of that. So that makes it even more challenging, but you get at the end the best quality product, which is what the Garrido family always strives for. You guys had attracted a lot of attention for the cannabis infused cava with gold flakes in it. I mean, you can't get really more de lujo than that. So maybe this question is more for Alex. What was the impulse behind the idea of creating that particular product? Hace años que trabajo con los cocos de oro. Ya en el 2015-2014 ya tenía unas botellas que comercializábamos en Ibiza y en discoteca como por ejemplo Pachá o Suárez y ahí tenía el glamour de lo que es el oro y decidí pues igual que teníamos esas botellas pues intenté que en vez de saber a cava solo sparkling wine que supiera también a cannabis algo que me gustó sacar así mucho más fashion para darle mucho más de glamour so um... <laughs> I keep forgetting that I need to translate. So when he started in 2015 in Ibiza, when he brought the bottle of his 23 carat gold flakes that he was able to introduce in Ibiza. Of course, over there, it calls attention a lot. He saw the potential that this thing had, and then he said, okay, why not also making it with cannabis, you know, adding that different touch already, having something that is super premium, also that attracts attention to everyone because it's gold flakes, you know? and then adding the cannabis. You can make it, of course, mango, anything, anything mm. you want. Mm. That might seem like a very silly question, but it's not dangerous to be consuming large amount of gold in your cava glass. There's no medical reason not to. It's correct. Actually has some health benefits. I don't know what they are, but you can ask in Dubai, they have everything with gold, <laughs> even the coffee. You drink coffee with gold. So after all this development, then, as you mentioned, the pandemic really interrupted the launch of the Mevalonix line. So essentially, after all this work, you've had to start kind of from scratch when it comes to presenting these non-traditional sparkling wines to the wine sector. So first of all, how did you guys weather these past two years? And also, what are your plans for the future? How do you make yourself stand out as not just a novelty product, but something of quality? We are sort of in a, I would say, unique position with our product because within the alcohol market, sparkling wine is the one that has the most projection nowadays. It actually tripled in 2022. I would like to say that we have a unicorn within this market. We are able to go directly to distributors. We're having people helping us uh, in other markets to go directly with distributors because the normal process that will be you go to consumers, you do events and things like that, then people want it, then restaurants and hotels ask for it and then the restaurants and hotels ask for distributors. We sort of are in a unique position that we can go already directly to a distributor or a hotel and then sort of work our weight like that so we can make it uh, available to the public the fastest possible in something truly unique that so far we're the only ones making and the way that we're going it out it's targeting the hospitality sector and then partnering with key people that are helping us launch in other places like the US for example is the largest market for this we're hoping for the rest of this year setting up the base of all this work and then next year we'll probably start seeing the fruits of all the work how has the Spanish and international winemaking business changed over the years? For example, since the bodega was started by your father, Alex, what things have changed and what things have stayed the same? Lo que es igual que siempre es el método de elaboración. Nosotros seguimos el mismo procedimiento, el método tradicional. Lo único que lo que yo he visto es que el mercado demanda, porque el público siempre es diferente, demanda otro tipo de productos. Entonces, junto con mi socio, lo que hicimos es buscar una serie de mercados que el cava o el champán 
o el espumoso italiano, no tenían. Y ahí decidimos incorporarle las frutas para darle ese punto de sabor diferente y de ahí pues salió la idea de también incorporar a los terpenos de cannabis, que en el 2018 pues tuvo mucho éxito aquí en España, en la Feria Internacional del Cannabis, tuvo una aceptación muy buena. La producción, básicamente, estaba buscando, junto con su padre, para continuar en la tradición familiar, en la manera en que elaboran la producción. Y estaban buscando productos italianos, products, etc. Y eso es cuando tenían la idea de que vamos a hacer algo diferente, vamos a hacer una innovación. Y eso es cuando obtuvieron la línea de fruta, vamos a decir. Vieron la aceptación de la línea de fruta, line, and they started to do even something more different, which was the cannabis. They presented the cannabis product at Spanavis event here in Barcelona, in Cornellà. Actually, the most important cannabis event in all Europe. They won the gold medal as the most innovative product. It had a lot of acceptance. The lines to try the product, they ran out of product, they ran out of cups, they ran out of everything. <laughs> so it was truly a success. The part that has stayed the same is the elaboration process, which is the traditional method or champignon method that it's been carrying on from the family for all these years. Mm -hmm. Throughout all these years and through this new process of creating this new product, what's the most important thing that you guys have learned on this whole journey? Or maybe some advice you'd give someone who's passionate about winemaking and maybe wants to get into the business? Alex could be the best one to answer this. What I've been learning from him, I know his family, there's one thing that is important, quality. Mm -hmm. And if you're passionate about this, whether you're gonna want to try to elaborate their own sparkling wine, go for quality. You will enjoy much more. When I mention quality, I mean traditional method like it's done in the past. Companies that still do that method, they have not industrialized the process, that do double fermentation, don't have added sugar or sulfites. Very little companies nowadays have either no sulfites or little sulfites, which is a chemical that it's added so the wine doesn't spoil. They, that's what causes hangovers. <laughs> in my family, especially my father, has prioritized to have a product excellent. Y siempre dar al cliente un producto, sobre todo que sea un producto natural, que es lo importante. Como bien decía Rafa, intentar utilizar, tanto en la primera fermentación como en la segunda, intentar utilizar los mínimos sulfitos, productos químicos y intentar utilizar cero azúcares para que sea sano para el cuerpo. Eso es lo principal y es donde nosotros estamos enfocados en eso. So the main focus of the family is to basically quality, to keeping the most natural process and things that are good for your body, not only from the terpenes or natural essences that are 100% pure, but also the cava or the sparkling wine that is as well with no sugars or no sulfites, the most natural way possible. Tell us where we need to send our bots and we'll get it to you. Yes. This interview is working out very well. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you guys the best with your launch and good luck. Muchas gracias por la entrevista y poder dar a conocer un poquito más Mevalonix gracias a ti. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, Rafael and Alex. Best of luck with the new Mevalonix launch all over the world and best of luck on all your projects and flavors in the future. Metropolitan Culture Corner family, be on the lookout for that distinctive M logo on shelves near you. Please remember to consume alcohol responsibly and of course, whenever possible, in good company and listening to rock and roll. See you next month as we continue to shine the light on the inspiring inspiring local slash international talented and creative folks who inhabit our lovely if hot city of Barcelona. See you next time and thank you for continuing to follow our adventures here on the Metropolitan Culture Corner.